Did you know that Guild Wars 1 still has an active community even now in 2024? While it may be hard to believe that a nearly 20 year old MMORPG still has a player base, it is very much true. From what I've gathered, it's not massive, but it is dedicated. But why though? Why do players still spend time on this arguably dated game? This game that has mid 2000s graphics, no new game updates or content for years now. Why would they still log in? The simple reason? The magic is still alive, folks. When this game came out, it was an absolute epic adventure, and it was right around the peak of the MMORPG golden era. World of Warcraft was released in 2004, RuneScape released in 2001, heck, EverQuest came out six years prior to Guild Wars 1. The time was ripe for an adventure game, and enter in Guild Wars 1. Now, I played this game right around the time of release, mainly because I wasn't allowed to play World of Warcraft and I couldn't afford the subscription. I sunk so many hours into Guild Wars 1. It, it was without a doubt my favorite game growing up. The idea of adventuring with a group of allies and at the time it was mainly other players, was one of the best moments in my gaming history. Honestly, because I really wasn't all that popular in school. But I was able to make friends here in Guild Wars 1, and I always had people to talk to and to play with. It was great. They didn't know that I was just a dork sitting behind the computer, or the joke was is that we were all dorks sitting behind the computer. It didn't matter. We were on an adventure together. Flash forward to today. Tons of MMORPGs have come and gone. WoW dominates much of the scene. Final Fantasy XIV is massive. Guild Wars 2 has a dedicated player base and more. But there still remains a dedicated group of Guild Wars 1 players who log in near daily to play this game. And in my opinion, the reason is simple. Guild Wars 1 has one of the most nostalgic MMORPG experiences in the genre. Legitimately. It captures the sense of adventure and magic in such a perfect package. But first, let's talk about what the game isn't. Even though Guild Wars 1 falls technically into the MMORPG genre category, I like to think of it more of an instanced party-based ARPG. Which, now that I say that, only convolutes the whole categorization thing. <laughs> While yes, you still do have the traditional MMO aspects that you would expect. Classes, character customization, questing, the main story. It, it can all be self-contained and done solo, without the need of any other players. And having said that, the game does have the MMO background, as you can of course party with other players and go out questing and of course doing the whole RP thing. But right from the start, they had a way to essentially fill the gap. You could utilize henchmen or heroes. Henchmen remain basically the bread and butter of a lot of your group composition, and the heroes are the simple named characters from the Guild Wars lore who can also be leveled up and customized, especially with their own skills. And these are mostly done through just unlocking quests. So really, <laughs> who needs friends? The gang's all here. Despite the debatable genre placing, Guild Wars 1 has, of course, faded out of the limelight when Guild Wars 2 was released. Despite two major campaigns, an expansion release, and multiple content updates through the years following the 2005 release, it ended up just being less and less well known. Actually, I wonder how many people play like Guild Wars 2 and really have no idea what the predecessor is. I mean, I'm sure they would assume Guild Wars, but, but I'm sure that there's people who have never experienced Guild Wars 1. And of course, with those mid-2000s graphics and a wildly more popular successor, it should, by all accounts, have been put into the box of games that we played when we were kids and no longer care for. But that's not what happened. As I've stressed early on, the game's strongest suit here is adventure. It really does the epic story that spans across the entire massive continent of Tyria, as well as, in my mind, the perfect setup for skill and challenge. The main story prophecy starts out in an idyllic, grassy, green, and happy land of Ascalon. And after you get your bearings and level up a few times, all hell breaks loose when the evil kitty cats known as the Char basically set off a fire nuke on your city, called the Searing. This spurs you and the survivors on a journey not only to save your people, but to stop the evil that is lurking in the shadows to destroy the world. To me, that doesn't sound anything less than a pure good old fashioned classic adventure. Of course, the main character of this journey is you, but unlike other MMOs where you basically become a god, Guild Wars forces you to understand how insignificant you actually are. 
See, Guild Wars 1 has a level cap of level 20, meaning that there is only so strong how your character can become. This naturally makes later missions and open world more and more challenging as you cannot scale infinitely, but it also creates a really fine balance for the game in all the best ways. Guild Wars also offers dual classing. Literally, you can create a character of your main class and then choose an off class to pair and mix and match skills as you see fit, allowing for all sorts of crazy builds and compositions, but of course none being more important than the warrior monk, the OG. Of course, there are gear upgrades, and those do help, and skill choices are very, very important. The most critical aspect of this game is its party composition. It really forces you to fine-tune your skills for the mission on hand, to be sure, but that, also, that, re but that really pales into comparison of how important the right party members are. It can be incredibly challenging to go out and solo missions on your own, although not impossible. So choosing the right characters, the right henchmen, or the right players for whatever mission that you are working on is where that challenge comes through. I mean, even though I played this game before and, and for years as a kid, I still find myself getting my teeth pushed in because I wasn't paying attention or I didn't bring the right party members. As the game progresses, you get more and more options of character choices as well as party composition. So you're able to pick and choose and fine tune your group to handle all sorts of crazy creatures that you're going to be facing out there. But even with all this, why does this game still attract attention? With other recent games released into the MMO niche, updates on the heavy hitters in this space, Guild Wars 1 still has a player base. And I can believe truly for a couple of reasons. The first, of course, is that it is that classic MMORPG experience perfectly the sense of adventure, the whimsy so-called of exploring with a ragtag group of friends or well fake friends if you can't afford real ones. <laughs> it creates an atmosphere of working through a puzzle as a group which is just really unique even now. The second major reason that I can think of is that the game has remained relatively unchanged for over a decade and even with its wild popularity at release, many of the veteran players may choose to simply download it and play it just to get that nostalgic feeling, that nostalgic hit that they had that they experienced when they were younger and honestly that's something that you can't even really replace with yeah, all these new games and new mmos that come out and lastly it honestly just keeps it simple i venture a guess that many players of guild wars 1 have busy lives families careers and and i myself categorize myself in there as well we're busy adults and guild wars 1 doesn't really care about the hype or i should say the pressure of keeping up with dailies or binging the new release of game updates or grinding tons of gear to be on the same level as your guild or your friends to be able to progress a certain tier of content. As a note there, that doesn't mean that there isn't any grinding to the game, but simply put, it's not like the WoW situation where you're grinding Mythic Pluses. No, simply put, it really has an ongoing appeal of a simple MMORPG experience without the financial or time restrictions or constraints. Play how and when you want. Now, Guild Wars 1 isn't totally unique in that regard. However, I do feel that it does the best. I also may be very biased with this. This doesn't mean that this is the only reasons that why people still play this game. For example, you can complete unique achievements and goals in Guild Wars 1 to earn rewards in Guild Wars 2, which can be like the title God Walking Amongst Mere Mortals or the Fiery Dragon Sword, which allows you to have the same Fire Dragon skin in Guild Wars 2. There's tons of reasons to be able to play this game. Of course, if I'm going to talk about Guild Wars 1, I also have to mention the PvP in this game. While of course not at the height of its glory back in the original release days, PvP is one of my favorite memories of this game. You can create characters simply just by making them focus only on PvP. And that means of course no PvE elements, but you jump straight into max level matches. There is of course a small tutorial and such, and you basically get to try out any of the classes you would like, depending on whatever expansion that you own. Guild Wars PvP was such a great time. There are so many different combinations and skills and builds that you can put together that it is quite literally its own giant entity of endgame. I remember spending countless hours trying to come up with the best warrior monk build that would be able to survive and deal a ton of damage and I just had all these fantastic dreams even though I would get my face pushed in by a touch ranger. 
Nowadays, there isn't as many people playing, as you could imagine, but that doesn't mean that there isn't any one. Few times can be a little bit longer, of course, but you can still join up against other players, and albeit they're probably a lot more skilled than I was, I died, I died a bunch. Keep trying to make that warrior monk combo work. I don't, I don't know what happened to lay on hands. I remember lay on hands, but. Regardless, PvP is still very much alive, and it only adds to this fantastic game. It's a whole subsection that this game is still producing on. It's amazing. Now, I also like to bring this up because I haven't fully confirmed it, but perusing what Reddit threads I could see, it seems like the game really still has developers tied to it. Basically, the game does run itself with no issue, but it does appear that there's like one or two people who are still working on this masterpiece. I found that very interesting. But why in 2024? Why would I stand before you and say that the magic is still alive in Guild Wars 1? Well, for me, the game simply does what modern MMORPGs do not. Guild Wars 1 allows me to experience that classic questing adventure in a day and age where speed and novelty are rampant. Many games, and rightfully so, try hard to be unique, to stand out, to do what hasn't been done before. And while yes, that is important and necessary for the progress of this genre, it also loses some of the heart of why the MMORPG genre is so damn good. Setting out on an adventure, growing in power gradually, overcoming massive challenges with friends or fake friends, <laughs> capturing that really great immersion of you being the hero. That to me is, is the magic that Guild Wars 1 does, and that's why it stands out. Now, I would be lying to you if I said that I play Guild Wars 1 all the time. I, I certainly do not. But every now and then, when I get the itch to log in and do some quests, or a mission or two, or perhaps work on an achievement, or simply really just pass the time by exploring, Guild Wars 1 is magic because it has a way of bringing back the carefree times that I played as a kid, even now, even if it's only for an hour or so. Guild Wars 1 has the magic. It is the classic adventure RPG that is still alive and thriving nearly 20 years after its debut. While certainly not as flashy nor as complex as other more modern MMORPGs, it really does create the nostalgic experience like no other. Loading in once again to the green hills of Ascalon truly brings back the fondest memories of my childhood, and in my mind, those cannot be replaced by any other game out there. Have you played Guild Wars 1? What is your fondest memory of the game? Tell me in the comment section down below. I recently have played Lord of the Rings Online, and legit, that game is in its best shape ever in 2024. You can see that video here. Otherwise, stay caffeinated, folks.